Today we're going to do a how to paint a wall tutorial. I've seen recently on Facebook where some of you posted pictures of paint cans, and I'm afraid. So I'm going to show you guys how to paint a wall. All right, first things first, you want to make sure you sweep the area. This is a reno or a re uh, renovation or a reconstruction, and so it doesn't matter if we get paint on the floor because we haven't gotten there yet. But if you do hit the roller on the floor, you don't want to have too much dust and dirt on the roller rolling back into the, the wall. Also, we've swept the wall and cleaned the wall off so there's not any debris. Um, this has not been primed, but it is painted. It's painted with a semi-gloss white, and we're going to paint over it with another semi-gloss. And I always suggest, um, uh, I actually eggshells what I suggest, because it's not real reflective, but you can also clean it better than satin or flat. So, all right, first things first, we've got our pan. Now, you've got different kinds of rollers. This is a traditional roller. I have 18-inch rollers, and they also make 24-inch rollers. I use the 18-inch rollers when I paint apartments or use the same color um, because it blends in real good. All right. Now, first thing about the rollers is that there's pressure points. Whichever way you, you're going to be rolling the roller, you're going to have pressure. In this instance, I'm going to start with the bracket on the sprocket facing the open area of the wall, and that's where my pressure is going to be applied. And I'll show you why that's important here in a second. But I'm going to start in the corner here, and I'm going to roll up. What I'm doing is I've got a fresh roller full of paint and I'm rolling up so that way, for well, two reasons really. One, I can, I can smear the paint up the wall, get, ensuring good coverage. And the other reason is if I had a full roller and started here and pushed down, the, it would actually gather and gravity would, fall, would pull the paint down to the ground and you would have drops of paint on the floor. Now, if you're using a paint cloth, that's also helpful, but you don't want ounces and ounces of paint dripping on your paint cloth because this stuff's expensive. All right, so now I'm going to show you why it's important that you actually apply the pressure in the proper direction. I've got paint on there. If I'm doing it this way and I'm rolling the opposite direction, I don't know, can you see that, Aaron? Do you need to get a little closer? Let me show you what we're looking at. We've got buildup right here. Can you see that on the, on the camera? We've got buildup right Slightly, here. Yeah. So there's the buildup. And because I'm applying pressure on this side, but I'm rolling that way, the only way to avoid that is to roll into the pressure. So I'm applying pressure to the right side of the roller as I go. And it's going to cover up and take care of any of those lines. Now, if you've watched any of those do-it-yourself TV shows, you know, where they paint the room, um, you'll see them paint like this. All kinds of crazy ways. All kinds of crazy, then they come back and do it. Well, that does ensure coverage, but it wastes a lot of paint. Because you wind up going over the same spot more times than necessary. I promise you, if you buy a paint and primer in one, and your wall is either a lighter color or a similar color, you can cover it in one coat. The only thing you might have to do is to go back with a little bit of touch-up on some spots that are just a little bit white, or maybe your paint didn't quite get into the cracks especially on a textured wall like this. So I always start at the bottom with a roller full of paint. I roll the paint up. I do go back a little bit over left what I did previously, and that just ensures coverage. Now, how do I do the top half? Well, that's easy. I fill the roller up again, and this time I start on the top half. Now, you want to get as close as you can to the ceiling but you don't want to touch the ceiling. I usually go until I can't see the until I can't see the corner. My roller hides the corner, and I go just a little bit further because I do trim. All right, you cut in or trim out or cut in the wall. I don't use tape. It's a waste of time to put tape on the ceiling. If you ever hire a professional and he asks you for lots of painters tape, you need to hire somebody else. But instead, you'll just take your brush and you can cut in the corners. Um, those walls aren't done yet, but. Um, once you cut in the corners, just go nice and easy. But the more you roll, the less you have to actually put on your brush and the less you actually have to paint. So, all right. Notice how I flip my roller over and I'm going the opposite direction, but I'm also applying pressure in that direction. Questions, comments? This is Josh Randall with Under One Roof Construction and Property Maintenance.